there's like an approver that has to approve it before us, but um, it shouldn't be more than 24 hours. And the website again, please. Let me just uh, give everybody a chance. V I M E O dot com slash showcase. Show C A S E slash. Now, do you have to put all the numbers in also? You do. Seven, five, eight, five, three, four, six. And a question mark? A question mark. And then page, page two. <coughs> equals two. Yeah. Equals two. Page equal to. And no Plus. spaces in all of this, correct? No spaces. No spaces. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're Thank very you. welcome. I had a question. Um, is there any way that the Parks Department would be interested now that we're talking about this technology for seniors? Do we have a class for technology for seniors? Like, yeah, we can look into it, absolutely. I think, like, I mean, I'm sure y'all do it, like, for camps for kids, right? Yeah, we have a code. I mean, it's coding, but we can do something a lot more basic. Yeah, we can, social we can definitely look into that. I think that would be amazing because we, as performers, there's so much they can be listening to and so many ways that they can entertain themselves. Um, if you need somebody to help you with that, I can do that. I can volunteer. So, to do yeah, I can look into that. We can maybe do a little tutorial that... Um, it would just be getting them there since it's a tutorial on how to, it would be kind of difficult. Right. Cause it's like, on how to, how, like, how do they get there? If that's, they don't know how to do it, but it's a tutorial on how to get them there. So maybe if you guys <laughs> helped them, but we can do a tutorial, they can always access, maybe they can have it as like a, a smart link or something. Yeah. And like they can see the actual screen and like, I think I'm a visual person. So I need to like, yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, we can put, uh, I'll talk to the team and see what we can put together. I would like to, I have some question, please. But uh, okay. first, first I, I, I have some reflection. And I record my reflection. I hope you, you hear well. As we know we're near living in a health crisis due to the coronavirus pandemic, there are many people who, due to among other factors, boredom and the loss of freedom due to confinement, added to social isolation, are experiencing worry, anxiety, fear, uncertainty, hopelessness, and stress, decreasing their ability to increase their immune system and therefore be more susceptible to contracting the coronavirus. Classes by Zoom have many limitations. No one corrects you. It is an experience of loneliness is you and the screen. I believe that activities that help to break this sad routine and give a light of hope to adults should be supported. Obviously, with all the required masking and distancing precautions, what is the possibility of subsidizing and providing teachers of Tai Chi yoga chair stretching to the buildings of seniors? We at Stella Maris have a large outdoor space and we can provide chairs for these activities. Well, it's, uh, I think so it's time to, to cut, to cut. It's, we have two options. By Zoom, the people can move easy, but there are, there are people who can to move to go outside and it's a, it's a very, very stressful for the people to stay in their phone and to see the screen. They feel lonely. We have to think about what, uh, what kind of, uh, what possibility to, to, to send teachers to the building. In my, in my case, I am Stella Maris. We have a, a big space outside. And um, we would like to to have a, a, some teacher of Tai Chi, stretching or, or dance or whatever is possible. Uh, it's my question for for, the, for Lucy Alonso. Please. So at this time we are we are we are doing phases to start to start. We just started with our children. 
we have an after school program and the kids are coming now. Um, so uh, that's our focus, making sure that we can um, start safely and have them. So we do, we are looking into different things that we can do for our seniors. Our virtual programming is something that we started now. We can start looking into um, doing classes to um, teach seniors on how to access that better. Um, but at this time, um, we just don't think it's safe to have seniors gather. Also, a lot of the senior centers are not allowing us in. Um, so, um, but we do plan on, on restarting and, and whatever that looks like, whether it's in our facilities or not in our facilities, we are open to looking at different ways and we hope to start that soon. Um, so hopefully maybe um, in November, the numbers stay down. Um, wait, but our it's many months, we wait. I'm wait, I'm wait. And this uh, uh, pandemic, I'm going to be for months, maybe, I don't know. I hope so, no, but uh, whatever, the people are stressful. The people need to go, get out. I, I don't want to take a bath, go to uh, some bar or some place to take a class. I would like to stay uh, very safe uh, outside of my building. It will be possible. Um, and then, uh, there are a uni, a uni is a big building, um, very safe. I don't know why don't don't uh, uh, there are there are in class there. I, I don't understand. Well, well, our goal is to start uh, and and hopefully sooner than later. Um, but our, a lot of the senior centers are not allowing um, anybody to go in. If, that, if, if, if that's but, what I've been told. But uh, that um, the recommendation is. To keep the mask and to have the distance. The people go to the supermarket, meat shopping, and they're more close and more uh, um, safe. Uh, if we take classes, uh, that is some exercise, we keep it more safe. But it's, it's no reason if you keep the protocol, you will say. So, my uh, maybe Magnolia can uh, assist me, but I, 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 from my understanding, is that they're not promoting senior gatherings of any kind at the senior centers. Magnolia, right. is that correct? Yes, it is correct. Here, Rebecca Towers, we are not holding any activities, no congregation yet. No, not yet. So that is one of the challenges that we have. Um, in doing so, going to the senior centers. We, our main priority is for everybody to stay safe. Um, and to get through this. So we, we do, as much as we do want to start programming and we know how important it is, we also want everybody to just be safe and, and we want to adhere to those guidelines. But I think the fact that uh, right now you have like, the chair is a really good source because that gives us the opportunity. I suppose before they didn't have that. The window for them to be active, it is in their apartment, but it's with an instructor, it's a guided you know, class. And I didn't have that before. I'm going to be sharing this with my residents. Everybody yes, I will. I will share the flyer. And if you would like, we can make you have some legal and take you physical flyers by the end of this week. Excellent. Thank you. Oh. Gabby, you have a very good point. They're out there shopping and they're doing other things. Have you talked to the administrator of your building about this? Would they allow? Yes. I, I talked to the administration and said uh, they allow outside to to go. Um, to have classes is, is allowed. They say yes. That's if good. The only we need a teacher. We, we need support. Mm -hmm. that well, if everybody can start talking to your administrators and get some rules and regulations, I'm sure that you're building. Um, Stella Morris would have some some guidelines and if someone wants to put it in writing, then we certainly can take a look at it and try and get some contact and uh, and work on it. Thank you, Libby. Okay. Um, send that to Diana, and then she can tell us what we need to do. Okay? Okay. Uh, For freedoms and uh, council powers are not allowed. No. Okay. We can check those off right now. No. Federation, too. We are not allowed. Because it's a uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. So we know for sure For freedoms is a no. No, and council powers. North and South is a no. And did I hear Federation say same mm -hmm. thing? No, same thing, because this is hardly, no. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't know about Rebecca Towers, and there's a potential at Stella Mars, correct? 
Rebecca Towers is a no. Okay. Debbie, Debbie, yes. uh, the city of Flamenco Group is doing their class outdoors in Flamingo Park, but the weather yeah. is not conducting into meetings. I would like to know if it's is possible to use the city hall parking lot on the third floor where they usually do air system. Is possible? Diana? I, I can ask, what, what floor did you say? It's like the same floor, the sixth floor. The sixth floor. And then, and then either it will. I don't know who is the 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 the, the contact in unit to allow some teachers do exercise, do classes for the exercise, because this this is a local. It's amazing. It's amazing. But nobody there. No no food. Nothing. And then. When I pass by, I say, oh my God, this is so uh, unbelievable. The, uh, there are, uh, uh, the, the, um, the ceiling is very high. The stairs is uh, very easy to, for the people to go up. Okay, the people always at the chair don't go. But, but, but uh, there are many people who can walk and can do it. Yeah, and don't have any, any place to go to be safe. Please. I don't know who is the, uh, the answer. You need to, who can pull answer me this question uh, allowed to to do classes there? I don't know. Debbie, can you answer somebody? I don't know. So I, well, I can answer that. I know that, I mean, even the exercises for the uh, city employees have, have, not, have not continued. So I really don't think that they're going to allow for for the flamingo class, but I can ask. But even the class, no, no, oh, no, only flamingo class in oh, flamingo in the in the city. But I say in in the unit, in the uh, local of the unity or the in the. No, are you talking about unidad? The both, the both. I say, <laughs> okay, you you going to see about the right. party, you know, right? right? But uh, now I am talking about the unit, unit in the unidad, unidad. Unida, en unida. Uh, what uh, it will be possible to the teachers come be there and give class for the people? It's possible. Or? Okay, no, I'll ask. I'll reach out to to Unida, and um, and I'll reach out to the to the city about the city parking. Okay. Yes, and another question. Uh, in the in the city, there are some office about uh, to work about the activities for seniors, uh, specific for seniors. There are some office. Uh, I don't know. What's the question? Yeah, my question is: in the city where you work, Diana, there are some office who take care about a. Uh, Senior activities. Well, that's what we had the presentation um, last week. Maybe um, you missed that part, but we did have somebody from the community uh, services give an update on what they provide uh, seniors in their department. Right. But I, I can get you the contact, and um, I think she also sent a flyer. I'll resend that flyer that has what they do for the for the seniors. Uh -huh. okay. uh, we had um, Gloria on the line. You know, she's she works in the mayor's office, um, Gloria Campos, but I don't see her anymore. Um, I wanted her to also give an update of what she does, but I'm gonna try to get her back on the on the line because she's she's texting me. But I'll send you that information as far as what what seniors uh, what the community service department does for seniors. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's very in, in, uh, um, interesting to know now there are classes in, in North Shore Park. This interesting. I, I never know that. Uh, I don't know how long they, they do that. They start. I don't know. But uh, it's a, a, another op option for the people. Many options is better. Good. But nothing. Okay. Thank you. All right, so at 10.30, we have our guest speaker, Dr. 
Clifford Medina. He's the Chief of General Medicine at Mount Sinai, and he's going to be presenting on the importance of the flu shot. So before Dr. Medina arrives, we're going to go through the rest of each senior citizen center and ask a few um, for a little bit of an update. Council Towers, north, south. We have an update on what's going on. Um, I think our, our liaison um, hasn't finished her paperwork, so we'll have to go straight. Okay. To Four Freedoms? freedoms. Yeah. Hey, Inilda? Inilda. No, everything is all right here. Okay, we're well, through uh, renovation of the building, but everything is all right. They're still going on with the renovations? Yes, this will take a long time. Okay. All right. How long How long will the res renovations last? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Until next, next year. Next year? <laughs> and then same to, well, I'm not representing Council Towers, but since I work there, we are going through a renovation too, and this will take... More, uh, more or less two years. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Hi, hi everyone. It's Oscar. Hi, uh, Oscar. Hi, Debbie. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I apologize for being uh, on the call late. Uh, so that some of you might know I got had a little bit of a hectic morning. So, but everything's fine. Uh, we're all good. Dr. Medina is going to be on shortly. He. Um, he has a residency training program and uh, he's going to be on. But I have a couple of questions, especially for um, the senior living facilities, uh, Magnolia and Anilda um, and the rest of you. Um, what's going on with open enrollment? You know, this is the open enrollment period with the, all the insurances. Um, are you, are you, are they being, are the seniors being held? Are they getting all the information that they need? Um, and so forth. Well, here at Rebecca Towers, as always, we haven't stopped. Ever since the pandemic started, we've been present. So any questions that residents have, if they want to change, our doors are open. Many times we don't do one-to-one, -one, face to face, but we have been using our phones and using a lot of conference calls. Okay. Where we our resident, then we put them in contact with whichever um, insurance they want to either change um, or even question. So okay. that's our office has been handling the um, questions or their needs in reference to changing uh, health insurances. Many of them are not changing, they're ch staying with the one that they have, okay. but <laughs> to change or want to change or they want more information, the conference call system has been uh, really helpful for us because it has helped us keep the social distance, but at the same time, help them. So okay. that's what it has been here in Rebecca Towers. Okay. All right. That's great. So like every year we at Mount Sinai, we, uh, we, um, you know, we're agnostic to all insurance companies and everything, but we want to make sure we vet the insurance agents that, you know, um, that we sort of associate ourselves with to make sure that they're giving all of the, everybody the correct information. Because I know that during open enrollment, it's like a free for all of all of these agents. So, uh, if you have someone that has any questions uh, regarding their insurance and they want to talk to an agent, we have agents that cover all the insurances. We work with all the insurance companies, not just one or two. We cover, we cover all. And we can refer them to that insurance agent if they have any questions. Oh, that's good. Okay. Thank How you. would they reach out, Oscar? How do they reach out to you or they to can, the insurance? They can call me, they can call me my, uh, by my cell phone. Uh, Magnolia has my cell phone. Everybody here should have my cell phone already. They can give me a call, and then what I'll do, uh, or actually, we also have um, another phone number that I'll send it to Diana, and uh, that's sort of like a call center that we have, uh, and that person is answering the uh, the calls, and they ref you know uh, refer the the person to the insurance agent or the insurance company that they want to speak to. Okay. Okay. And I have the other question is more on the a lighter side of here comes the holidays. Uh, what's going on for the holidays for at the um, at the housing units? 
Well, for here, for Rebecca Towers, we're already getting ready for our Halloween, which is the first one. And we're going to be doing um, goodie distribution, which is a bag with candies to their doors. Okay. Everything being handled in here, from donations to food distributions and goods, everything has been delivered to the resident's door. We knock. If they're there, we leave whatever the donation is. Being if it's food, we never leave those on the door because we don't want them to go spoil. Right. But that has really enforced social distance, but also to encourage our residents to remain in the units and no need to go out without any need, really, because many things are being donated here to Rebecca and they have been using. So we don't want them to guess that for the, um, the holidays coming up. So the first lineup is the goodie bags for Halloween. We're working for our Thanksgiving meals and also the holiday season. Um, our residents haven't been alone here in Rebecca Towers. We've been here for them. Uh, we had modified our office hours, but there's always staff here. So our residents know that they're not by themselves. If they need us, they can just call us. So for them, I don't think the isolation, as many have been um, talking, has been really been, uh, I, at least I don't feel it here in Rebecca Towers because we have been accessible to our residents. Okay. Well, regarding Council Towers and for Freedom, well, I, I don't know. I have to check with the service coordinators for the buildings, but I think we are not, at least for Halloween, we have, we decorated the, the building, the building, the area, the common areas, but I don't think we are going to have anything scheduled for the Halloween and for the uh, Christmas and New Year, I really don't know. Thanksgiving, yeah. I don't know if they are planning anything. Okay. Um, for Jewish Community Services, our Meals on Wheels program did provide an additional bag to the seniors who get Meals on Wheels on the Miami Beach for the high holiday. And then they are gonna do an additional food distribution with the Meals on Wheels for Thanksgiving. So. We are also, um, with those particular events, we have volunteers that are just doing at-the-door delivery, not face-to-face. -face. All right. Uh, lastly, I have one last uh, thing. I know last, uh, last time I was on, I talked about uh, if anybody has any questions regarding Mount Sinai and the coronavirus, uh, if they should go get a procedure, or, again, you can always give them my cell phone number if any any of your residents have any questions regarding, again, anything about Mount Sinai, uh, they can call me. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's good. Um, when Dr. Medina comes on, if everybody will please mute your uh, speakers and microphones so that we can give him undivided attention. For anybody who hasn't noticed, Melina posted in our chat that there are yoga classes at the North Beach Band Show. So, Gabby, you might want to look into that and see. And what what day is an hour? Melina, do you know what days and hours for the yoga? Yes. So, um, hold on. Uh, yes. So, I will find out. I'm not sure, but I saw that they went live, like they did a live of the yoga classes, and they have a lot of space. So, yeah. Look. It would be kind of a safe thing to go do, to do um, inside. Um, I'm going to talk to Benton. Um, he's the head of the North Beach Fan Show. And I will let you guys know. Is that okay? Because uh, yeah. I'm not sure what days. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. And I'll let you guys know. Let me see if I can find it now. It's very important. Yeah, because it's a, it's a safe area, safe space. Um, you know, and... You can walk there or take the bus there or something, um, and it's safe. Thank you, Melina. Yeah. Right. Um, before Dr. Medina comes on, we want to talk about the November 30th meeting. Our meeting is always the last Monday. Diana, I'll be out of country till late that day. So do you have a suggestion or do we have a vice chair? What should we do about that? Yeah. I was suggesting, I do have to check with communications to make sure that there's no other meeting for when we decide. Okay. If we just wanted to move it 
to the, um, let me look at the following. Do, wait a second. Um, so this is our November meeting. Do we no. want to move it to the week before in case any of the seniors sit, um, need something, any emergencies through Thanksgiving? Is there anything we need to address? If not, then the following week, either one I'm fine with. The 23rd. What does everybody think? That's Unmute good. yourselves and let me know. That is the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, you said maybe people are traveling the, week, the whole week. We okay, know. then move it to just the following week, December 7th. Yeah, much better. And do two meetings yeah. in December. Yeah, better, better. That is better. Mm -hmm. Diana, you want to check and see if that's okay? I'll check December 7th, right? Correct? Yeah. Okay. I'll check with communications. It shouldn't be a problem because Mondays are usually, and I'll confirm via email. Okay. Um, Gabby, can you get into the chat area? Because Lucy has posted um, yes, that, that, for yes. workouts. Okay, everybody can see that. All right, good. I do the picture. Okay, perfect. Does anyone, let's see, Rebecca Towers, we covered uh, Magnolia. There's nothing else you need for Rebecca Towers? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, Ileana is usually the one that sits in for Rebecca Towers, but she was not able to meet. That's why I'm sitting here for her. <laughs> okay. Uh, before Dr. Medina gets on, is there anything else that you guys would like to bring up for the seniors? Um, it, can everyone please go back to your administrators and talk to them about Oscar and the insurance? Um, open enrollment, that's kind of important. So if you can talk about it this week and make sure that they're checking as they go door to door or whoever has daily contact with the seniors, put it on a list to ask them about the insurance, um, to ask them if they have any questions or concerns about going to the hospital I think it's great that we discuss it, but I think we need to be very proactive and try and get whoever has daily contact with these people to get the authority to ask these questions so that we know that um, when people need help, and I think they're very important questions. Um, I think the flu shot after Dr. Medina speaks, the information that we learn um, can please be taken back. This is a recorded meeting so anyone, any admins can go back and look at the recording to get the, the information and discuss it with the seniors. We need to reach out and try and help as much as possible. Okay. Can yeah. you be telling us when Dr. Medina is available? Whoops, you're on uh, mute. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yes, uh, he's logging on right now. Okay. Did someone else have a question? Yes. Um, Debbie. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm concerning about the security of our building, Federation Tower. Uh, we, don't, we, doesn't have, we don't have any uh, security after hours, after the office closed, we don't have anything. And uh, it's 11 floor, uh, we are all seniors, and everybody is concerning because since March, this year we are in renovation so it's a lot of people in and out and a lot of different uh, trucks and you know different cars and also in the weekends and uh, all of the uh, my the tenants of my uh, you know my neighbors are concerning about that and uh, any suggestion to get a, like a Rebecca Towers and, um, have like a council tower, everyone that have 24 hour, you know, that security over there to help us, you know, to security us, any, con any, any way to do it? Diana? Magnolia, is that like uh, a private security company or is that um, with the city? No, no, it's private, it's right. private. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so so the the uh, building has to pay it, right? Yes, we pay for it. I, I can still ask. I mean, I'll ask police department. You know, to maybe keep a, a watchful eye, just because during um, construction right now, 
Okay. I think it would be nice, Diana, when you're talking to the police department, if they can come up with maybe just a little bit of a basic plan, like they will go by their alternate times, three or four extra times a day, just something so we can give them feedback so that the residents feel a little more secure that um, they might have a little plan or something if they can. Yes. Thank and you. I was, I was actually going to um, invite police uh, for this turn for this meeting, but I'll go ahead and invite them for the, for the December meeting. Perfect. We'll get in touch with them obviously before and let them know. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Debbie. Okay. All right. I'm switching him to panelists now. Okay. Everybody mute your phones or mute your uh, whatever. Thank you. And then unmute when, if you need to speak. Oscar, if somebody has questions, should we type it in the chat? Will you be watching it? Will Dr. Medina or? Uh, he could be watching it, but I'm pretty sure uh, if you want to ask questions, you could raise your hand and he'll be more than happy to, there's okay. uh, to answer them. He's okay. on right now. Okay. Hi, Dr. Medina. How are you? Good morning. How are you? How is everyone doing? I'm Dr. Clifford Medina. Thank you so much for having me today. Welcome. Welcome. So um, we, we were interested in uh, discussing, you know, the importance of the influenza shot, especially during the COVID period. So I know that you're really busy and uh, the, the group is really anxious to hear what you have to say. So with that, could you take it away, please? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, uh, I'm the uh, Chief of General Internal Medicine here at Mount Sinai, and I see patients uh, on the inpatient ser service and the outpatient service. Uh, and uh, these are these truly have been unprecedented times for, for all of us. Uh, so thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk to you a little bit about the flu season and the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as you know, uh, even Without the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, influenza season uh, tends to uh, create a lot of angst amongst the healthcare providers because uh, you know seasonal flu can be uh, very uh, dangerous for many of our patients. Uh, in general, seasonal flu can cause uh, between uh, you know 40, 000, on average 40,000 deaths per year in this country. So uh, seasonal flu is nothing to scoff at. Uh, and uh, it, it can certainly affect many of our elderly citizens, uh, patients who have chronic diseases such as lung disease, asthma, heart disease. Uh, so uh, seasonal flu is certainly a very uh, dangerous uh, infection that can be easily transmitted. And uh, certainly from a public health standpoint, it obviously is also uh, very worrisome, especially because seasonal flu can uh, lead to other complications and hospitalizations. Uh, patients uh, sometimes underestimate the flu, uh, especially because, uh, you know, in, in some patients it, it may cause mild symptoms, but in others, uh, you know, it, it's something that can be uh, very dangerous, especially if you live in a home with uh, senior citizens or patients with chronic diseases. So um, many of the things that we we're doing now for COVID-19, uh, you know, we we certainly ha had promoted in the past for for seasonal flu. Uh, and the thing about seasonal flu is that seasonal flu is a moving target. Uh, seasonal flu is a disease that uh, every year changes, and um, and this has to do with the the. Uh, the, the organism itself, which um, undergoes uh, shifting in its genetic makeup, which makes it uh, challenging for uh, us as hosts to, to try and keep it uh, under control. And so uh, what we typically depend on to help limit the impact of disease is vaccines. And, and obviously many patients have different opinions about uh, vaccinations, uh, but uh, science being what it is, uh, it, it does, it has shown in the past that vaccines are very important at fighting uh, the, the spread of the flu across our communities. Uh, the flu vaccine has many benefits, including uh, reducing the likelihood of hospitalization. Uh, for some patients, it also reduces the likelihood of dying. Uh, it reduces the likelihood of 
uh, developing uh, cardiovascular complications from the flu. And uh, also, it, it helps prevent the spread of the flu even uh, within your own household or across the community. So uh, it has a, a tremendous amount of benefits for patients in keeping them healthy and, and keeping them from having to be hospitalized or uh, for our younger population, keeping them from missing days of work. Uh, and I encourage all of my patients, uh, regardless, to, to try and get vaccinated with the, the influenza vaccine because it can be uh, really, really effective at, at keeping he people healthy and preventing spread of the disease. Now, that being said, uh, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic is a, a very special circumstances upon which uh, this current flu season is, is um, existing. And this uh, could potentially be very problematic for our healthcare systems across the country uh, because nobody knows how the, the influenza season uh, will interact with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, there are different scenarios that people have discussed in the literature. Uh, some, some scientists, some physicians think that, well, maybe what we're doing now with all the current practices uh, for, you know, social distancing and wearing masks and, and hand washing, maybe these things will be very, will be effective in actually reducing the likelihood of us having a very severe uh, influenza season. And that's certainly one possibility. Uh, on the other hand, uh, another possibility is that COVID-19 and influenza uh, may somehow interact and make it uh, possibly a worse season, uh, which could be problematic for our hospitals uh, and our doctor's offices, especially if there's a surge within a surge. And uh, certainly that's a scenario that no one wants to see. But um, really, regardless of whether or not we're in the pandemic, the best thing that we can do to protect ourselves, in addition to a lot of the uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions would be uh, the vaccination against the flu. And, uh, you know, there's some talk in the literature that maybe somehow uh, getting the influenza vaccine uh, may the di diminish the effects of COVID-19, and this is all just theory, but uh, it's, it's out there that, that some physicians think that it may have some protective benefits. Uh, but Really, the, the most protective benefit comes in preventing you from becoming sick with influenza. Uh, and uh, patients who have influenza, uh, you know, could have uh, less severe symptoms if they've actually gotten the vaccine against influenza. So uh, the benefits are, are really uh, exponential in terms of how, how it can impact the community and prevent uh, patients from, from spreading the disease and perhaps uh, by, you know, vac vaccinating yourself against the influenza, perhaps you can prevent uh, the, the COVID-19 from, from uh, being transmitted. Who knows? It really, it's, it's up in the air. No one really knows. But until we have a, a COVID-19 uh, specific vaccine, uh, the best things that we can do, again, are doing all the, all the interventions that we've talked about that we've all been following very closely and then at this point, um, you know, vaccinating yourself against influenza. Now, you know, it really is a challenge for us as physicians because uh, there's not really an easy way to distinguish between someone having the flu and someone having COVID-19. Many of the symptoms are very, very similar. And uh, this presents a, a big challenge for us. Uh, we're going to see patients uh, either in the emergency room or patients who present uh, to us uh, uh, in our practices, and uh, we make the have to have the tough decision about whether or not someone has COVID-19 or someone has influenza. And really, without doing a, 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 a test, a, a nasal swab to actually check for the actual virus itself, it's very hard to make that determination. Uh, and certainly, it will be a challenge this year trying to make that decision uh, about what's the best way to treat our patients. Uh, influenza tends to strike very quickly and patients tend to get very sick very fast within the first couple of days. COVID-19 tends to be a little bit more of a lagging type of disease where, you know, usually in the, in the, at the end of the first week or maybe at the beginning of the sec second week of the infection, infection is when things tend to turn uh, more severe. Uh, but it's very hard to make that, uh, that distinction uh, just on symptoms alone. And 
uh, oftentimes it's not very easy to, uh, to do the testing, uh, and depending on uh, the patient's um, setting. Uh, thankfully, in the emergency department, we can, we can check the test a little bit more quickly, but uh, in the outpatient setting, it's, it's a, a lot more challenging since we don't, we don't have some of these tests are at our disposal. Uh, and uh, influenza in and of itself can be problematic because influenza can lead to other infections uh, such as pneumonia, uh, and uh, these infections can be in addition to the influenza, especially for our elderly population uh, who are more susceptible to uh, pneumonia infections. So uh, the over 65 population not only should be vaccinated against influenza, but they should also be vaccinated against uh, pneumococcus and typically the best way would be to receive the vaccine called uh, pneumovax or Prevnar. And uh, so uh, the influenza vaccine uh, should be received on an annual basis as early as possible in the, at the beginning of the flu season, uh, as soon as it becomes available to try and uh, help increase the, uh, the protection against the seasonal flu. And then uh, patients who are uh, 65 and over uh, or who have lung disease and other diseases should be vaccinated against uh, pneumonia vaccine. And that'll go a long way in helping to prevent patients from uh, having complicated disease uh, and getting very sick and, and presenting to the hospital and possibly even dying from these diseases. So uh, there's a lot going on right now. And the best thing that we can do is really protect ourselves and encourage our loved ones and our family members to uh, receive the flu vaccine uh, to uh, help protect uh, themselves and to protect their families and to prevent uh, complications and uh, hospitalization. So uh, with that, uh, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions. If anyone has any particular questions about influenza, COVID-19, or, or uh, influenza vaccinations. So Dr. Medina, um, you know, recently... I've been hearing a lot of uh, people saying that if you do get the uh, flu vaccine, uh, that they're they're covered. You know that the there, there's there's a, a lessening of the COVID vac of the COVID um, virus to the person, um, and I think it's the 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 misconception there that you're protected by COVID if you're getting the flu vaccine that. Your, um, your, your the case of COVID is going to be lessened. Yeah, so uh, that's that's theoretical at this point. Uh, there's no science behind it. There are no studies showing that. Uh, there's uh, really nothing to really uh, say that uh, influenza definitively helps protect you against uh, uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, but there are some physicians out there who think that it, there may be some benefits, uh, you know, and uh, there may not, they may not be explain, explainable at this time. Uh, and so uh, the best thing to do at this point is to ensure that uh, you're not going to get influenza uh, because sometimes these diseases can travel together. There, there are some reports in, uh, that came out of China uh, that have documented that some patients were actually getting both influenza and COVID-19 infections simultaneously. Uh, we think that the likelihood of that is very low, uh, but certainly uh, having one of those infections is bad enough, but having the other uh, could make things a lot tougher. So anything that you can do to protect yourself against influenza uh, and, you know, may may possibly be beneficial against COVID-19, but definitely would be beneficial against getting a dual infection. Okay. And lastly, um, I know that the, in, the the flu shot, we can get them pretty much anywhere, either at your doctor's uh, office or CVS, Publix. Um, but the pneumonia uh, vaccine, where do you get that? Okay. Yes, yeah, similarly, you can get them at Walgreens, CVS. You can get them at your doctor's office. Uh, all, most doctor's offices should carry the, the, uh, the vaccines, and uh, they're very low risk. Um, patients uh, typically will only need Prevnar once in their life after the age of 65, and typically we uh, will follow up a year later with the Pneumovax. Uh, we don't uh, give those vaccines simultaneously. Those are usually separated out by one year. 
All right. Any any questions? Any other questions? Thank you, Dr. Medina. This is Debbie Quaid. Just a quick question on the most common side effects. So those that are watching here can see um, that it's not as, as crazy as some people report. So the common side effects of getting the flu shot? Uh, common side effects of the flu shot are uh, mild achiness, uh, low grade uh, fever, uh, fatigue, and um, those side effects are, are not that common, but when patients do get them, typically we advise them to rest and take Tylenol for the symptoms, and they usually resolve within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, there's uh, Sometimes there are patients who have egg allergies, uh, and that's often the question that we ask our patients, uh, and that's something that certainly should be discussed with physicians. If they have egg allergies, they should discuss that uh, if they're going to receive the flu shot. You can still get the flu shot, but uh, there may be some other steps that need to be taken beforehand. And uh, a very rare side effect uh, is a neurologic condition called Guillain-Barre, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, that is extremely, extremely rare. Well, I have to say out of the over 100 people I know that have gotten their flu shots this year, not one has had any issue, no problems. They feel great, didn't hurt, shot was fabulous. So uh, thank you for helping us encourage everyone to get your flu shot this year. Absolutely. Yes, Gabby? Uh, what happens if you have a, a coronavirus, no sim symptom? Uh, what happens if you receive the, the flu shot? Is a well, uh, I, I don't have a specific answer for that in particular, but... Um, you know, I will tell you that uh, we give patients with other infections, you know, like I, we have patients who come in with colds uh, and we still give them the flu shot. So it, there's not necessarily a danger in, for patients if, if they're, you know, if they're a little under the weather uh, to get the flu shot. Um, I think if someone is, is seriously ill in the hospital, uh, with a, a very bad disease, I would not give them the influenza vaccine because that would not be the, the, the appropriate place. Uh, but even if we, people with mild colds, uh, we do give the influenza and, and it's not, uh, you know, specifically a, a dangerous thing to, to do that, to give them the influenza vaccine. Um, so I guess we'll have to see uh, how things unfold with COVID-19. I, I haven't, you know, at this time, uh, I haven't heard of anyone receiving uh, influenza vaccine. We're just starting uh, the influenza season now. The vaccine just came out uh, probably late summer, early fall, so it's only been out for a little while. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that anyone who has a severe infection should not receive any type of vaccine. But if, if they have a very, very mild cold, uh, you know, certainly it's safe to, to receive the influenza vaccine. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you, Dr. Medina. Really appreciate it. Um, Diane, is there anything else? Gabby or Debbie? I don't think so. I'm I'm good. Okay. I mean, it could be something that Sabrina... Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Medina. We look forward to seeing you in the near future. Thank again, you. And thank you for supporting our seniors. Have thank a beautiful you. day. It's a pleasure. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Lucy, you have to be in the asylum. If, oh, now it's Lucy. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Okay. okay. Can everybody hear me? I can't. I don't know yep. if I unmuted or not. Yes. Okay. I'm here. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Well, okay. that was great from Dr. Medina. Please encourage everyone to get the flu shots. Um, mm -hmm. Just be fantastic. Is there anything else that anyone wants to have a discussion about? Yeah. No. I would like to say one thing. Yes. So I got confirmation on the yoga that Melina was talking about. Um, it's at the band show um, through the Rhythm Foundation and they did like a test run with a private group which is what Melina was talking about um and it seemed to go well and he's trying to put it on the program starting in november oh awesome okay and it it will be on mondays uh, he didn't tell me the time but he will put it on his website and he'll be promoting it and um i will 
try to keep a lookout and share it with Diana, but he's trying to put it online, not online, not actually online, but on the actual programming starting in November at the band show. Thanks. Okay, yeah. I was trying to reach out to him as well. Thanks. Okay. I, I have to go, guys. Thank you very Hi, much. Hi, Oscar. Thank okay. you. Bye. So, guys, in summary, Diana's going to look into the date for our next meeting. You all are going to go back and um, speak to your admins and talk about uh, promoting Oscar's assistance with insurance. We're going to uh, try to get our Zoom classes and training. And on that note, we need a motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you. Maggie, you going to make a motion to adjourn? Uh, yay, yeah. yay. <laughs> Do we have a second? Yes, me. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank have you. Thank you, guys. I'll send out Bye. that. Okay.